Hello and welcome to Daily Sport Locker Room Podcast, episode number 88. Tonight we're joined by Gareth Morgan. Uh, Gareth is a youth coach developer and a course lead for the FA Advanced Youth Award. Uh, Gareth, you're very, very welcome. Uh, yeah, great to have you on the show. Um, Thanks very much, Stevie. Not a, not a problem. Obviously, I go back a, a long way with you. Uh, the two of us cross paths in Manchester Metropolitan University. Yeah. Uh, I, I came home and I knew sort of stayed in England, so... You've you've obviously developed this role, or you've you've got this role within the FA. Maybe you'd, you'd you'd want to tell us a wee bit more about it because it's a very intriguing role as as a coach educator. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's um, <clears throat> it's um, well, it, it's I'm one of I think there's eighteen of us um who all um basically work the the our roles are really to 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 work with the 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 coaches working within the academies uh, across the ninety two professional clubs. So. Um, the program was really created about 12, 13 years ago, um, uh, and and really that it was it's a it's a program that was that's kind of part funded by um, the Premier League clubs, the the EFL clubs, and then um, the FA as well, um, and and it's a bit unique in that sense in terms of it because it is funded by the clubs. Um, our our jobs are really to go and and to support the clubs um, in 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 their environment. So um, I guess it kind of it was born out of a, I suppose, a, a belief that, um, I guess this isn't unique to to sport, but a lot of people go go to whatever wherever the the host site is of the of the, the education course, the the coaching qualification or whatever that they're gonna they're gonna go and do, and then not very much of that maybe makes it back to the workplace. You know that whole you've been on a course, so, you know the people that you work with maybe take the mick, and so people become a bit reserved about necessarily implementing maybe the ideas that they had on the course because because maybe they just they, they don't want the stick or whatever it might well be so as a way to to try to to work around that um the idea was that if we can try to take the education to the to you know to each of the clubs take it take it to the workplace um it gives us a greater opportunity to to maybe bypass a lot of those limitations so so yeah so like i say um uh, th this is kind of reflected in in how a lot of our coach education would be delivered now so you know so for example if you were to come on a uefa license you'd come now whereas back in the day you'd have come for a a two week residential um then had a year to go and kind of accumulate all of your coaching sessions and you know get your session plans done and all the rest of that in your reviews and then come back a year later for another week um yeah. and then you get signed off at the end or you, you pass or you fail or whatever it would have been um it we, we kind of did away with that or probably about 20 years ago maybe 15 years ago right. um and now it's the case that you, you come for six different two-day blocks that are spread across a 12-month period and the idea is that in between each of those two day blocks, um, me or one of the, the other people that works in the team that I work in, um, we go and see you work in your environment with your players um, right. in, in accordance with your club identity. Obviously, the other, you know, the other staff that you work with, your your assistant coaches or your, you, you know, maybe your sports scientists or, or whoever it is that might be there supporting, that they would all be working with you. So it's to try and make it as as real as possible and and to you know because again it's that, that old passing the driving test and then go back into the you know get back into the car and just drive however you want to um it's, yeah. it's to try and bypass a lot of that stuff and just keep it yeah keep keep it as as genuine and, and yeah. real to, to 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 your environment as possible and i suppose gareth from that just to build on that you know people who are actually doing their coaching award it's it's just hard to beat real life experience, isn't it? Really, it's really like, and and you have that ground level experience. It's just interesting you said because it's a big talk and it's a big debate in the GA at the minute. You know, obviously there's a lot of coaches on our forum that are that are GA coaches, but but there's also a lot of coaches from soccer and rugby background mm -hmm. as well. But from a GA perspective, there doesn't really seem to be that level of scrutiny when it comes to coaching awards. Like obviously the soccer, it's a it's a much difficult pathway to to achieve the award. Would it be right in saying that it's a harder pathway? Um, I, I I don't know to be honest, Steve. I don't know. I think it's um, yeah. there's um, there's there's definitely a, a, a I guess a, a a belief that would be quite prevailing amongst a lot of the people that I would speak with. So again, um, you know, the, 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 there's rights and wrongs with all of this. I think um, but whereas, like I said, in in years gone by, you would have you would have completed the course of learning, and then you would have had your final assessment. Now, yeah. very often that final assessment would have been where you were coaching the other people that were on the course. You know, they would have been running around in your session mm -hmm. and 
um, and you'd have been trying to get them to, to to kind of demonstrate whatever the topic was and to be able to evidence that you know your stuff, you know the game and that you're able to communicate effectively and so on. Um, and yeah, and you, you, you passed or failed. And, and again, historically, the failure rates were really quite high. Um, there was okay. almost like a, as, a, as a measure of trying to, to kind of keep the, the bar high. Um, yeah. There weren't many that made it through. Whereas um, the, the ways in which we operate now, there is no final assessment. There's just like okay. a, an ongoing assessment process. So, you know, again, using the UFA license or the, or the Advanced Youth Award course that I lead on as examples, um, the, the kind of basic commitment that we have to each of those coaches that, that, that we accept onto those courses is that we'll, we'll go and see them working um, at least six times in their environment with their players and, and there won't be a final right. assessment at the end of all of that. There'll just be an ongoing, um, you know, almost a, a, a informal assessment that's taken place that's just about yeah. recognizing the, the things that they consistently do or maybe things that come out of the first conversation after the first observation that says, you know, you, you maybe you maybe talk too much during the practice or you don't allow the, the, the kind of practice to flow very long or your area sizes tend to be a bit too small. And then, you know, whatever, whatever it might well be, and then just seeing how they you know, how it is that they, they, they kind of implement or how they sort of evolve their practice as you, as you see them each time. So, yeah, so it, 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 it's almost in a way, it's almost become easier to pass because, because it is that ongoing thing. There is no final judgment day, if you like. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, so that, that, I guess that's, that's a reflection of how things would be in, in soccer, certainly in, in England anyway. Um, so, so you're yes, currently, you're currently working with a couple of Premier League clubs, yeah, a couple of Premier League clubs, Championship clubs. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's Very that's good. it. With with the with the eighteen of us that that work, we're we're kind of located all across the country deliberately, um, in order to 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 enable us to have that sort of coverage of the of, of all of the ninety two clubs. So, so everybody, um, everybody in the in the team that that I work in would have somewhere between three and say three and six clubs that they would be going into and the idea is that you go in really on a on a weekly basis to, again like I say to their to their training ground to see to see coaches work to support them you know whether they're on qualifications or not so you know I'm, I'm living just outside um, just outside Halifax uh, which sort of straddles the the kind of uh, halfway between Manchester and Leeds it straddles the Pennines and um and so I go into clubs that are, you know, just on my doorstep, if you like. And, you know, we've got fellas right. on the, in the northeast and fellas in the south coast and so on that, that'll look after the clubs in those parts of the country. So, yeah. And, and I guess the idea, the idea with that is that, you know, how you how you work in in one club. So I've, I've just had a phone call with um, a new a new academy manager who's just come in. Um, he's just been appointed in the last uh, in the last three weeks or so, and I, I've not met him face to face. But we had a phone call this evening, and just to sort of introduce himself and 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 me to introduce myself, and you know my my kind of almost open in line to him was about how how I'll work in at your club will will be driven by you, you know. So I, it's my job to support. I'm a guest in your yeah. club. It's my job to support your coaches to to be better at the stuff that you need them to be better at. Um, you know, ultimately. You're you're the one who's employing these coaches, and and as a guest that comes into your club, um, my remit is to help them to be better at the stuff that that you value. So so yeah, so what that looks like in one club, um, you know, don't get me wrong, it'll not be markedly different, but there might be subtleties around, you know, uh, one one academy manager might say, well, actually, I, I want them to be quite um, to give them the kids lots of information. I want them to you know to to give them lots of technical detail and 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 make sure that they they understand. You know what what's expected of them, and in another club, um, which is the case in in one of the other clubs that I go into, they say don't you know don't overload the kids with with information. Keep keep things as as light as you can. Allow them to play as much as you can, and you know don't be stopping them to to kind of make loads of coaching points. You know they don't want to listen to you. We just want them to play yeah. as much as we possibly can. So yeah, so how I operate in each of those two contexts, for instance, will will vary. Um, so as yeah. to be. To be respectful of, of of their their wants, really. Yeah, so you're you're sort of dictated by what they see their vision for their academies and and the culture within their their squads. You know, it's very interesting. Like, what obviously, yeah, that, that's a that's a huge part of your job. And obviously, within our own our own um sort of daily sports network with with over five hundred coaches, I think, in daily in daily sports. And to be fair, 
you know, there's a whole wide range of coaches. We have coaches that are coaching at the highest level. We have coaches that are coaching, at, you know, at, at ground level with underage. Mm -hmm. And I suppose if you were given, you know, advice to say, you know, a coach that's only starting out, you know, who wants to maybe go to the next level and bring his coaching on, what what sort of advice would would you be giving coaches and you know who are literally just maybe just starting on their journey? Because obviously you've been you've been yeah. on this journey a while now. So <clears throat> yeah, I, I probably would say and 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 it's it's a it's a difficult one to strike a balance with this but but i'd be saying try not to make your learning at the expense of of the kids learning you know in terms of you know ultimately as much as you're starting out and and we all you know we all have an ego we all have um a, 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 an aspiration to be as good at, at this stuff as we can possibly be um and and, and rightly so um but yeah it's i, th I think kind of sometimes that can get in the way of what's what's for the best for the kids so so you know so in that sense you know let let the kids play um let them play as much as they possibly can don't don't be stopping the practice too often like like i'd say the um the academy manager at one of the clubs that i go into would, would advocate um keep your practices simple um would be something else uh, again I, I think kind of um, again, something that the academy manager that I just spoke with was was saying. That one of his early um, observations was that he he sees a lot of weird and wonderful practices, you know, really kind of overly complicated. And 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 I I see yeah. a lot of this, um, or I have seen a lot of this. Where where I, I don't know what you know. I think the reasons for it can can vary. Sometimes it can be because I think coaches feel at times obliged to not repeat the same practice twice, so they feel like they need to mix things up and they need to do different stuff. I think in other circumstances, I think some coaches kind of feel almost like they they need to look clever. They need to mm -hmm. they need to separate themselves from the next person. And so if I'm doing these clever and yeah. weird and wonderful and sophisticated practices, then maybe people will think more of me and and that might lead to to better opportunities. But yeah, I I'd I'd be saying, you know, basically a, a rule of thumb that, that I was taught was if um if you're if your practice is gonna is gonna mess with the the game in its purest form if it's going to if it's going to deviate from the the rules and the you know the the sizes of the the areas that the kids will be playing in and so on then then you better have a very good reason for any kind of adjustments that you make mm -hmm. so so really keep keep it as close and as true to the game as you possibly can would would be something else i'd say um yeah that's re really really it's really good advice because sometimes obviously you see you go to coach education, you know, I, I involved coach education myself, I've yeah, running coach education clinics and school and that. And, you know, you get coaches coming up, you saying, and I want new ideas, you know, I want something different, you know, and as you say, sometimes simplicity is, is the greatest, you know, form of, of coaching, you know? Yeah. And I think what, what, what goes hand in hand with that Stevie is the, the importance of, of really observing, like really, yeah. really watching and noticing what your players what they're doing you know what are some of the maybe the recurring trends in in maybe some of their little habits that they have or or maybe some of the little um yeah the, the little tendencies that they have maybe they they always will turn one way in particular or maybe it is that the that you notice actually something about the the way in which they receive the ball um that that you know that that it's not just happened once it wasn't a, a one-off thing it was that's something now that i've properly been watching i notice you do this quite a lot and i think kind of if you if you allow yourself the time and space to to really watch and notice and to pick up on those things then in the moments when they, when you do then choose to speak to the players or do then choose to intervene um i think it'll it'll carry a lot more weight it'll it'll you know it's it's, it's likely to be much more impactful um so yeah so i think it's it's a difficult thing to 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 develop i think um in terms of coaches observation skills yeah. it's um it's something i was having a chat with uh, one of the heads of coaching that, that i worked with the other day he was talking about a real issue that 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 he's highlighted where you know you've got two coaches per age group and they're they're both you know they're both just following the ball so they're both both sets of eyes are seeing the same things um yeah. whereas you know who's tuning into what's happening away from the ball who who's noticing you know the movements that are yeah. being made in advance of the ball or what's happening behind the ball as you know as we as we build up the pitch so so yeah kind of i think a lot of that stuff um needs to be i think you need to become more conscious of it uh, in order to probably interrupt the the obvious thing to do is to just follow the ball isn't it so um exactly yeah yeah, yeah so i think yeah. observation and, skills would be one I suppose that that links me on to the, to the next question. Then, obviously, our, our next discussion from a 
coaches that's maybe starting out, and obviously you're working with a lot of academy coaches. And what about what about coaches who are at that advanced level, uh, Gareth? Like, is there, you know, how, how do they get to the next step? You know, because obviously we're on a road to, you know, continuous improvement all the time. Where you know there's no speed limits, I suppose, on the road to excellence. Yeah. But how, how do they go to the next level? You know, those that are that are more advanced. Like, is there any? smaller finer details that you would look for in that in that respect um yeah pr probably um I, although i would say that that I, I do think those couple of things that i've just spoken about i think they Are can important. be they can be just yeah. as applicable for in fact yeah, i think in some instances the those that maybe are a bit more advanced or maybe a bit more experienced again i think i think very often those coaches will 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 be maybe at most at risk of of overly complicating the practices almost that that okay. bit of idea you know yeah. a bit of confidence a bit of belief a bit of knowledge can can yeah. be dangerous or you know yeah. To, but yeah sometimes they're, they're the ones that'll be coming up with the most kind of complicated yeah. and almost as a as a means to try and demonstrate how you know how sophisticated their practices to, or the practice design can be or or whatever so so yes i think those those would still be be at play but um I suppose one of the things that that we would um, that we would speak about in in our team would be uh, would be that I guess how people how people plan the sessions. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I think I think it's it's still pretty prevalent that you know a lot of a lot of coaches when they're you know when they're thinking about whatever the topic's going to be and that could be something that's that's imposed by the curriculum. You know that you this week we're working on on counter attacking or this week we're working on on defending the you know the, the final third or whatever um so so w whether it's predetermined what it is that you, your topic's going to be or or not um i think some it's not unusual for coaches to begin by thinking about okay well i'm going to do this practice or i've seen this practice recently or uh, i saw this one online or i saw this coach delivered and so they begin with the well it's a counter attacking practice so this is i'm now starting to think about the x's and the o's and uh, and all the rest of the you know the, again like I say the the sort of features of the practice design um yeah one of the, one of the things that that I would would really be strong on and um uh the the the, the, the a, a guy that I used to work with who's um incredibly experienced he, he's worked subsequently at, at Tottenham amongst a few other clubs but he was previously one of the one of the national coaches here um he he kind of would always talk about the 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 way of thinking about um who have we got what do they need and how am i going how are we going to help them to get better you know saying that 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 should be a start point for for every single session that you you're designing so yeah that was like so who who have we got as in the players base yeah who who are they uh, because actually it'll be yeah. you know because it we might have we might have we Johnny that's going through a growth spurt, or he's 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 yeah. kind of struggling with his movement efficiency. We might have uh, Dave, who's who's kind of maybe having a little bit of a, a dip in confidence, or whenever we're doing these sorts yeah. of practices, maybe he 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 struggles to be composed in in maybe some of the pressured situations. So you know, so yeah. so in thinking about the individuals, then starting to think, okay, so well, yeah, who have we got? What do they need? What do they need? Yeah. Yeah. So, so again, I remember uh, the, this guy that I'm speaking about going in to see him working with with some of the coaches and and ultimately the players. Mm -hmm. And on the whiteboard was it was it was blank and 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 that was the that was the sequence and of the thinking it was right. Okay, let's get right. all the names so that they had all the magnets. So it's all the all the names. Who have we got today? Well, these ones are in. These ones are in. Okay, right now let's start talking about who these who these players are and what what do they need. And then, um, what, was the, what was the third one? Uh, how are we going to help them? Which ultimately, how is, are we going to help them? Very good. It's it's the that's the constructing the the practices, isn't it? So if 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 these are the, these are the kind of series of things that these players need, well, let's now come up with a practice that's that's going to allow those the, the players to practice the things that, um, you know, that we've identified that they they need to keep working on. Um, so yeah, so it's it's almost like starting if starting with the players. As, uh, in mind rather than oh well I've seen this practice so we're going to do this practice because this yeah. is a counter attack in practice or whatever but you know kind of going down the path of getting into all of the X's and O's and the after five minutes here we'll do this progression and then we'll move it on to this that that way of thinking I think is often um, that, that, that you, 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 instead of instead of beginning with who are the kids that we're actually trying to help to get better this evening or this yeah. morning or this afternoon or whatever Who who are they instead of starting with them it, it kind of overly fixates on 
on the yeah like i say the x's and the o's and the, the constraints or the conditions or whatever they're going to be put on it so i think i think that's a real differentiator for for those that you know the people really yeah. kicking on that when 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 i see that kind of penny drop i think it's um it it, it just massively shifts how people then begin to think because you can see you know you can see how it is that the coach has planned for you know each of the players that are involved in the practice and when the when yeah. the players know well he's put this in for me you know this is the, and and he, yeah. he's thinking about me here we speak about this quite a lot so i can see that he's out of this yeah. little feature of the practice because this this is about me then their motivation levels go up their application levels yeah. increase so so i think th th so with the coaches would the coaches Gareth, share this with the players so would the coaches say look you know we know that you need x y and z so today we're going to do you know abc is that is that the way that would the coaches actually share that information with the players but very often yeah i think some of the best ones that i've seen work yeah. um i can very think good. of a, a club that, that that i've been into where you know almost it became standard practice that um the players come in in the morning and on the on the board is the is the practices for the day and um and the the job of the players was to to note on on the side of the board so this was all part of the the way in which it was set up they yeah. would note which of the practices within that day session were going to allow them to practice the things that they that they you know were their individual development areas yeah. or things that they them and the coaches had been talking about as being mm -hmm. their their priorities so it was right. kind of creating a bit of ownership there for the players to go okay i can see from this practice design as i can work out well okay that's going to go out wide and then that finishes with a cross well, I need to work on my cross, and I know that that's that's part of our ongoing conversation. So, so yeah, that, that's a you know that's that's one that's definitely for me. So yeah, just as a means to to enable the players to to make the connection. In other in other ways, it can be like you're saying, it can be more about you know just just speaking to them to say, um, you know, Pete, this is this is this is all about you. You know, this is this you, you're going to notice in this practice that it it puts us in positions of the pitch. Where, where we're going to be working on finishing or we're going to be working on the final ball and and this is all about you you know this is why we've come up with this practice so it, it again it I think kind of in doing that and I was assuming that's why you've asked Stevie it's like well it's yeah it, it, it helps to focus their attention it helps to build their yeah just the, their, their and and I, suppose, I suppose you know we're going to talk a wee bit about sort of characteristics of of the various coaches you've seen like one of the one of the common really good traits and I suppose communication is a big thing that you've you're already talking about. I remember reading a piece from Mourinho a number of years ago. It was a book he had Anatomy of a Winner, and I think he talked about a really good coach is not there to deliver a pass; he's there to deliver a message. You know, and I suppose yeah. it's how you communicate that message is so key as a coach. So obviously, communication is is something you've seen. You know, in the really top coaches as well. Would that be right, Gareth? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think kind of um, you know efficiency in communication, clarity. Of communication yeah. again. Um, um yeah. another fellow that I was really fortunate to work with, he would talk about um the quality of your communication is the response you get. So, you know, so in terms of if you're if you're trying to if you're trying to ultimately get the players to 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 implement something or to work on something in particular, um if they're doing it then it then then it's giving you feedback that that your communication has been effective in that case. So yeah. so being being deliberate and and how it is that you communicate your messages, you know, kind of it's, it's so commonly spoken about the whole power of three in terms of being able to offer three messages at, in in any given interaction as a means to you know I suppose almost manage yourself so as to not overload the players. Yeah. Um, so you know, yeah. in terms of how much we can actually through you know through work and memory, through, what can we actually process? So. I, th I think kind of being being really conscious of that or you see I think I see some of the, the best practitioners are very deliberate in in how it is that they do construct their little intervention moments whether that's you know in the in the halftime breaks the pre-match ones or even just around the training ground then you know yeah. that that power of three and being able to 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 be succinct in the way in which you um you you, you communicate is is massive really I've come across a saying you know in coaching I uh, picked it up but it at a coaching course I was doing in uh, in Dublin one day we talked about tactical timeouts you know in, in coaching where coaches pull the players in they have those sort of one minute as you said the power of three is, is very yeah. ideal for that because what tends to happen sometimes you, know, you probably say it yourself is coaches start to, to talk and then they talk and then they talk a bit more and players yeah. go switch off you know so yeah. you know that message is so important then sort of yeah 
Yeah, and, and I, I was I was at a game last night. I'm smiling because the as the I was stood next to uh, one of the the senior members of the, of, of the academy staff, and um, yeah, uh, the, the the team that had just played had just had just won the game really comfortably. Um, that this particular group had played a game on Sunday morning, trained on Monday night, and here they were um, on on Tuesday evening at uh, this must have been about quarter to nine or so on and this is an under 15s group and um the, the guy's saying you know they've, they've got school in the morning you know yeah. have, have the coach has forgotten like these lads they're, they're not listening anymore they're just yeah like they're just yeah. thinking I, I need to get home i'm starving or or i've, I've, yeah. I've got to get home and i've got school in the morning so I, I, maybe i live an yeah. hour 75 minutes away so but but that that kind of that temptation that i think coaches very often have of I've, you know i've got these really important things to say to you and um you know uh, and it's on it's on my mind so i'm i'm going to communicate it now whether whether you need it or not yeah. or whether you're ready for it or not so yeah, <laughs> yeah. i think that's the, the self-awareness yeah. bit isn't it really yeah and i suppose is there any other comments or uh, yeah, there's any other common characteristics that that you have seen from you know you've obviously worked with so many really good coaches you can you can see that quite clearly from 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 chatting this like but is there any sort of common characteristics that you would associate with you know the best coaches you've you've seen in action and i suppose you've already touched on some of them about the clarity of communication and yeah. you know how how they observe the players but is there any sort of just common traits even how they maybe even carry themselves or you know yeah I, I, well i'd i'd say I, I, um the, the 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 sort of three main things that i would kind of always always kind of connect with and and this is this is stuff that i that i kind of studied back at at university and and you know that that really resonated with me but the more the more i've been kind of doing this job the more i keep kind of getting confirmation of of, of the value of this but um this the sense of kind of genuinely caring for the players and and you know i speak with i speak with coaches about this a lot because i think it's um it's, it's a really difficult one you know you can't i'm not aware of a course that you can go on where you can go to learn how to care about people you know, I, th I think that's 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 part of who you are. It's a part of your your makeup. I think I, I personally believe that certain certain life experiences can can impact upon that. I, you know, I definitely kind of connect becoming a becoming a father to being something that that really mm -hmm. flicked a switch in me in terms of just seeing seeing kids differently. You know, recognizing what these are all these are all somebody's son. You know, and mm -hmm. so um, just like how I would want the coach of my son or you know to, to treat them you know it, it became more apparent to me so so I, I think that I think that the very best and you've named a few names there where, where when I think about Mourinho certainly in his earlier days the way in which the players would speak about him um you know it yeah. was you, you frequently would have heard them being talking about him being like a father figure and and mm -hmm. you know just having that yeah where, where it was it was a it was just such a strong level of connection to them as a human being and you know and, and you know almost putting the football to one side in terms of like the, the, you 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 matter to me and that being that being apparent through their actions and not just the words because i think it's easy yeah. to say those things but i think players are players know don't they whether you know whether whether there's any integrity to what it is that you're saying yeah. or whether it's just almost because it's it's flavor yeah. of the month that it, that it's in flavor of the month to to say that you care for your players or so on but you know your, your your actions will will ultimately dictate that so so yeah i i think kind of that sense of enabling people to really feel valued um yeah. it, it would be a massive one um the second one then would i'd say i would say and it seems really obvious but you know that make them better you know so uh, i i do uh, on 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 the advanced youth award course i do a workshop every year where where i ask the coaches to to think about the coach or manager that they played under who who they were most prepared to to run through a brick wall for and and you know and and to be specific in selecting that individual and then to talk you know we do it in small groups so they they have a chance to really uh open up on on what it was about them that that made them pick that person um and and very often they'll they'll talk about you know because he cared about me because he of how he treated me i, I felt like i was more than just a footballer but the other yeah. kind of dominant thing that people will say is that he made me better like uh, and and as obvious as it sounds, um, you know it it that that kind of it's our yeah. job as coaches to make them better. But but how many players yeah. do you actually make better? How many how many do you do you actually improve? 
Um, so, so I, I think that you can see that you can see that with you can see that with Guardiola. You know, at City, you know, he, he makes players. They definitely improves players. One hundred percent improves players. You know. Yeah, and and that seems to have become. You know, I think I think it's become really um commonly spoken about it it's almost like i think kind of the 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 maybe was i'm sure there'd be lots of people that would disagree with this but i think there was maybe a sense of that whenever you got to first team football that that the development stopped you know now it's about tuesday saturday tuesday saturday so we're just preparing for the next game it's about it's about game plan it's about tactics it's about you know understanding the next opponent and being able to prevent them from hurting us and how are we going to hurt them but actually in terms of continuing to develop the individual that that maybe there wasn't really much time in the week for that whereas i think yeah uh, there's a number of excuse me i think there's a number of um kind of current managers who who are really being singled out for that and 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 i think that a lot of their players are speaking about that in terms of how he is continuing to to improve them or, or you know finding finding features of their game that they're that they're kind of taking on to a different level so you know i think everybody wants that you know they want to work with somebody who's going to who's going to make them better you know if you can if you if you're telling me that you're going to enhance me and enhance my my prospects of of getting a better job or or be, being able to earn more money or whatever the motive might well be and 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 in 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 football it's it's the same thing isn't it so you know again we all want to we all want to maximize our potential and 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 all of the the kind of spin offs that that can offer us um so if 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 a coach is is genuinely making you better then then I think that would be you know that 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 is a massive thing for them um the the final one the third one that I would offer is the, um is is the idea of just almost making people um making people self sufficient creating that sense of or uh, the capacity to be independent to 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 problem solve to to think critically to 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 work stuff out for themselves rather than to maybe be reliant to be dependent on the manager on the coach you know yeah. what, do I, what do i need to do tell me what i need to do tell me what to um you know what the solution to this problem is because i'm struggling i think coaches or managers who can facilitate players capacity to be autonomous and to be independent and to and to be able to be self-reliant i think i think that's a that's a that's a massive one as well and um again i think there's some really good work going on and within that Yeah, I think Paul Kinnerk, uh, the Limerick hurling coach, I think he probably has, you know, got a lot of credit for for how Limerick sort of, you know, obviously four in a row and and mm. just a phenomenal group of players. But there's obviously a whole sort of you know focus around Paul's games based approach, Gareth, you know, to to coaching and how he makes players obviously on field thinkers because once they cross the white line, there's there's very little you can do in the sideline, really and truly. Exactly you know? that. Exactly. I know Steve Kerr yeah. in, the, in the NBA kind of seems to get a lot of credit for as well in terms of right. Right, there's, there's a lot of um because of how the, the TV works with her, where they just yeah. seems to be, they seem to be mic'd up while they're working a, a whole Very lot. Good. So you guess there's a level of insight that we're able to get from from that sport. But but yeah, that mm-hmm. that whole sense of you know almost yeah. making yourself redundant, like you say, that once they cross the line, the, the game's happening at such speed. So their capacity to to read and to notice maybe some of the little shifts in in, in what yeah, the opposition is doing or what was it feel like out there and so how do we you know how do we adapt accordingly within you know within the moment uh, and, and how would you as as a coach like how you know because a lot of our coaches would be very intrigued by this how would you implement that into your training then to make that happen like how, how are you are you going to allow players to become self efficient and and create independent is that just through a games based approach Gareth? is that what it is i think a games based approach scenario for coaching yeah okay. I, th- I think i think that's massive really in terms of like you said scenario yeah. creating scenarios um and then i think it's how you how you how you set that up how you work within that so you know so yeah. by creating creating game scenarios um Creating creating units or teams that 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 you you're posing the problem to and you're giving them opportunities to to try to to work out what's going on out there and then in in yeah. maybe the breaks in play again how do we how do we operate within that because uh, again a conversation I was having with a with a coach recently he was talking about he sent me through some footage of um of a, a pre match kind of session that he'd done in the you know in 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 the video analysis suite and um. And we were, we were ultimately we were talking about question, and so I think I think kind of how people pose questions, and then mm. in the moments when they do pose questions, what follows. Um, I, he was talking about how it's really helped him to pick up on how he answers a lot of his own questions, 
Um, and, and I think a lot of coaches do that. They'll, they'll, yeah. they'll pose a question and maybe the answer that they're looking for isn't coming back quickly enough that, you know, so how, how willing are you to hold a pause? How willing are you to, to allow people to think? And, and because maybe sometimes it can be really uncomfortable um, in, in those sorts of situations. So if we don't feel like it's coming back at us, we'll, we'll often answer our yeah. question, maybe not even conscious of doing it. Um, but yeah, I think, I think those sorts of skills go are, are really fundamental then to, to that sort of scenario based coaching that you're speaking about, because, you know, ultimately if we want them to be independent, if we want them to be the, the, the on pitch problem solvers, then how do we, how do we enable that to sort of grow? How do we nurture that? How do we, yeah. how do we facilitate their communication skills and the ways in which they, they disagree, you know, so, cause again, yeah. I think that, that, that's, that's the reality of, of those sorts of moments that it, you know, yeah. they don't all think and act and feel the same ways. So, so if yeah. there's 15 of us out there, then how, you know, how are we yeah. going to communicate in the moment? Yeah. How are we going to yeah. disagree? How are we going to speak yeah. about um, whatever it is that we're, we're feeling? And so I think, I think that all needs to be depending on what your start point is, but I think that has to be nurtured and you have to, you have to work with players on those, on those fundamental skills that are really integral to them being able to 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 kind of problem solve collectively while they're you know while they're in in, in the heat of the battle yeah yeah no very good quite very good and i suppose Kev, you know we're coming close to the end but it's been it's been a brilliant insight into your role and, and i'm sure obviously within that role you've come across hundreds of coaches would it, would it be right in saying probably hundreds yeah. maybe hundreds yeah yeah, yeah. And so more. you've seen a lot of, you've seen a lot of You've seen a lot of good practice. You've seen practice that obviously maybe can be improved, etc. Uh, I suppose I've always said this. I'm, I'm a great believer, even within teaching. Uh, we met last week, a collaboration of PE teachers around Nuri and Moore and met. And the whole idea was about sharing good practice and making contacts with people. And I suppose coaching is exactly the same. Mm. The greatest resource we have is each other. But how do you see the future of coach education you know what what do you see for the future of coach education and 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 how do you think i know it's not it's not the sport that you that you obviously have pursued you pursued the, the soccer name but how would you see that even for example ga how could ga improve coach education is there anything that you feel you know that that, that could really improve and and could bring a club on for example is there anything a club could implement or or do you know um, to jobs with their coaches yeah good good question stevie um i think i think there's um there's probably different different levels of that. So I suppose I'd start off by saying, um, uh, in 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 a in my previous job, I, I worked at I worked at a university for for eight years in in the in the sports coaching um department, yeah. there, and um was was really fortunate to work with some 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 brilliant people, some great thinkers, and um one of the things that they that, that one of the guys talked about, and he rewrote he wrote some some papers about this. He talked about the idea of within coaching we need we need chefs and cooks um and, and what he what he ultimately meant about by that was you know that that a, a chef is is you know like a a michelin star chef somebody who who's at the at the height of their profession but you know you, you're just home from training stevie you know if if if, if marie's yeah. not in the house or whatever you know you might need to <laughs> rustle something up for yourself and so you know just being able to being able to follow a a recipe and being able to yeah. you know, just to be able to to kind of follow that script and being able to produce something for yourself that's you know yeah. that's that's edible and so on yeah is, is pretty important so so what what he was suggesting was that actually you know across almost the the, the grassroots of the game um the mums and dads the helpers the people that are kind of volunteering their time you know that are really fundamental to to making the whole thing exist and and to to kind of creating that broad base of, of players that come through year after year well some of them might have aspirations to become a chef you know in terms of being mm -hmm. a top top level coach but yeah. others might just want to be a good cook a cook so yeah so so by you know from a coach education system, uh, system point of view then by by giving those people I guess some some really solid recipes, you know. So going back into some of the earlier parts of the conversation, here's some practices that we have come up with, and we know these work. You know, we know these are these are good. These will help your kids to practice really fundamental skills and really important parts of the game. They'll get a real sense of 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 enjoyment, of challenge, of competition, of the things that we know that kids really pursue sport for. And Brilliant. and it almost takes the thinking out of you. You've you've been a you know, you, you, you've, you've been a mechanic, you, you've been, you, you're a butcher, you're a teacher or whatever. So you, you've been so busy doing your own day job that, well, actually, here's, here's the recipe that, 
take the thinking out of it. Just yeah. go, and, go and deliver these things and become good. You know, as you as you kind of repeat the delivery of those those practices, you you get more confident. You more become clearer on. You're able to become slicker in terms of the setup and so on. So I, I think kind of there's there's that as as something that you know. How do we get a you know a, a nation of of really competent cooks who 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 can who can do this stuff really effectively and 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 you know providing a a high you know a, a quality level of of kind of service if you like to to the masses at the at the junior end of the game um yeah. would be something that, that that we'd stand for but then you know if, yeah. if we're looking then more at the chefs then how, how do we how do we help those those people will yeah again recognizing that there there's going to be fewer of them then then how do we make how do we make the support that we offer them that bit more bespoke that bit more um individualized and and kind of really responsive to their individual needs and wants um no that's easier said than done and um how how you go on a, go about doing that will be will be heavily influenced by you know the resources that you have you know how much yeah. how much you can actually throw at it um but I, I think kind of um I know something that we're looking at at the moment is um just in terms of our coach coach education offer having certain things that would be core for for everybody so say you you go on a uh, on on an advanced youth award there would be certain modules that would be core that everybody would have to do these yeah but then there would be there would be a number of other modules that that people a little bit like university i suppose but a, a, mm. a number of other modules that people would need to pick up in order to accrue the the total number of modules that they need to to pass yeah. the course but but you choose which ones you want to do you know, there's almost yeah. like a menu of things that yeah. you know, will be about periodization. It might be um, helping players to manage their emotional control. It could be to do with developing safe practice or whatever it might be. But you, based upon the things that you, you know, maybe the the self assessment that you have of yourself, or maybe maybe by kind of getting some somebody else's opinions on you who knows you well, um, maybe that might help shape that. Actually, I think I think this would be good for me. I need to, yeah. you know, I need to do a wee bit more than this because I think this is a, a real development area for me. So yeah, I think that's a that's a, a means to to just offer people a little bit more, um, mm. a little bit more choice and to make it a bit more personalized yeah. to to them. That's, that's that's very interesting, Gareth, because last year Kieran actually Kieran Daly, who's who's the, the the sort of the the founder of of Daily Sports Science, Kieran actually had a module section in in one of his his coaching offers where coaches could go in and do a module in yeah. Uh, I delivered delivered one actually in in sort of in, in tactical aspects of surrounding Gaelic football. There's other ones in periodization and stuff. So it's very interesting because, as you say, it's not like a sort of a one cap fits all. It's mm. you know, you're you're tailoring and tapering for for everyone's needs, you know. So yeah. But uh, I suppose we uh, finish there and on a lighter note, there I remember I go back to our own days there, and I think uh, one of the first managers you ever had was me. Was I, I was the player manager that year? Remember? You were, yeah. Manchester. <laughs> you learn any good traits from that? Stevie, one of the bottles off the wall or... how how you managed to <laughs> to get that group together and that was and, a, that was a, that was a group that was a group that took a that lot was of a group um but yeah that that I was know. like I know I still see quite a few of the fellas like with the, <laughs> talking about like a, how you, how we kind of focused we became and and the level of kind of um, just the level of discipline and it was, and it was good it was good you know, there were good days there were good days it was good it was a good schooling for me actually because it obviously you know I went on then obviously did. yeah. 15 years now I've been been coaching um you know and, and getting games I suppose at, at senior level and it's it's been looking back and I suppose that's where my journey probably started you know at, at uni yeah. with with you men like and I suppose the same for yourself probably too you got yeah. your book at university too you know yeah um, so too, yeah. But, uh, and, and you have a connection with the GA at home I suppose as well don't you your, your uh, yeah no definitely it's uh yeah that's um yeah definitely a big big kind of family connection in, in football and uh, yeah, good stuff. and, and and yeah, my dad's still still referee, and he's been refereeing the Gaelic and the hurling for about forty years. And then brilliant, brilliant, as, very as good, you know, very well, good. Uh, a lot of a lot of Kilku, a lot of Kilku based family. So um, yeah, <laughs> oh, he still playing. still playing. Yeah, it's, I know uh, that's, uh, they're, they're still they're still a very very good team. But here, Gareth, listen, it's been absolutely brilliant having you on tonight. Um, I know our coaches are going to get an awful lot from this. I know I've got I'm scribbling notes here as you're speaking all night, like so. I've taken away some brilliant nuggets and I suppose from a coaching education perspective, if you get one or two little nuggets in in anything you do, it's it's obviously, you know, been a success. But look, I'd like to wish you all the best in, in your future ventures and 
and and good luck to you and the family and thank you very much for your time Gav. yeah same same to you stevie same to you and, and yeah thanks very much for, for for inviting me along it was um you know it's a i've not done one of these before uh, so it's 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 nice to be asked top and, class. Um, yeah so i appreciate you you can yeah i know it's been top class uh, top class and i would say our viewers will be they'll be delighted you know particularly within the the, the group of, of coaches that we have they'll be delighted Gareth. thanks very much again boy. thank okay. you all right take it easy cheers steve